Hello and welcome back. Introduction to Fourier series today. So um, what is a Fourier series? You can think of it as the Maclaurin or the Taylor series. Uh, only this time, instead of ex expanding in some kind of polynomial expansion, we're going to be expanding in terms of sines and cosines. Uh, we're going to start with the Fourier theorem and this is what he actually says. This is essentially what can we do. So let's uh, write it. If f of x is piecewise continuous, piecewise continuous, let's say on an interval um, alpha to beta, okay, then the following thing will be true. Then our f of x can be written in this particular form, and I will define all the quantities in due course. a naught over 2 plus an infinite series from n is equal to 1 to infinity, a n cos n pi x over l plus b n looks quite a, quite something the first time you see it. It's actually very easy. Okay, so that's all inside the sigma. And of course, we need to divide to def define a couple of quantities. First of all, what is uh, the a n's and the b n's and the a naught here, perhaps, and also the l. So where? Let's start by defining the ANs. The, I'm not going to define this separately. The AN, of course, if this is uh, separately here because that is A0, while the ANs inside the sigma start from 1, so that's A1, A2, A3, A4, and so on, and the same thing for Bs, B1, B2, B3, and so on, but there's a spare A0. And, of course, the formula, what I'm going to write here, covers the A0 as well. So AN is equal to 1 over L, and I will explain what L is, alpha to beta, f of x cos n pi x over l dx, that's all your ans, including the a0, <clears throat> and uh, the bn's, so let's put a little divide, uh, divider there, bn is 1 over l, so let's not panic, it's quite a lot to write obviously, but we're going to leave this definition f of x, and we're going to look at an example to see something in practice, n pi x over l dx, very similar expressions. And let's finally define what this L is. L is, in fact, is known as the half period. Is actually, if the interval is a to b, um, half this interval, so b minus a divided by 2, uh, said B minus A, beta minus alpha. Uh, being uh, being uh, in in uh, Greek in in um, background, I mean the beta and the B for me is practically the same. So I do apologize. It's meant to say beta and alpha there. Okay, over two. All right. So this is known as the half period. So let's look at an example to actually obtain the Fourier series, an approximation basically for a known function. And let's see what happens. Okay, so let's start with an example. Um, let's uh, get the Fourier series of, let's say, f of x is equal to x in the interval minus pi to pi. This will make life easier because, first of all, the interval is 2 pi apart. So your a is minus pi, your b is pi, and therefore my l will be simply pi. And a lot of this quantity is because we're going to have now a pi for our L, and this pi is everything will be cancelling there. It'll be a lot easier. Okay, so let's start uh, uh, computing some of these quantities. So first of all, this is our expansion, and let's produce this loan A0 first of all. So what is A0? A0, according to the formula, is going to be 1 over L, that's 1 over pi. The, inter the interval is now from minus pi to pi. And our f of x is, of course, x. And, of course, n is equal to 0 here. That's the a definition of a naught. And, therefore, that's the cos of zero is simply 1, dx. And, of course, the a naught will be 0. Because, of course, this is a naught function in a symmetrical domain. And, therefore, it will integrate to 0. The same will be true for all a n's, where n is 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Because if we look at the general a n, so it's going to be 1 over pi, the integral from minus pi to pi, f of x is x, cos n pi x over 
L, which is in fact pi. So these pi's would have cancelled, it's not a problem. But there's no integration to be carried out there because, of course, x is an odd function, the cos is an even function, odd times even is odd in a symmetrical domain, all the ans will be, in fact, zero. So what we're left now is to compute the bn's. So bn coefficients, that is going to be 1 over pi, the integral from minus pi to pi, my f of x, so I'm looking at this bit here, uh, my f of x is, of course, x sine n pi x over pi, so it's going to be the sine of nx dx. And of course, in order to do this particular integral, I require integration by parts. Before I do so, um, this is, first of all, not zero because that's odd. This is odd as well. Odd times odd gives me even. So in fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to write it as two lots, because it's going to be easy for my integration. If it's an even integrand, zero to pi x sine of nx dx. And I'm going to do my integration by parts somewhere here. So whichever way you do it, uh, use your own method, of course. Uh, x differentiates to 1, and the sine of nx comes back to a minus 1 over n cos of nx. So this will now give us 2 over pi. I'm going to put a big bracket to multiply. Everything's going to come out. So this is now to be evaluated. So it's minus x over n cos nx between the limits of 0 and pi minus the integral. Um, that's going to be a plus eventually. 1 over n cos nx dx between 0 and pi. So this is from the integration by parts. So we're continuing. And what happens there? Well, what happens there is we're going to have, first of all, 2 over pi. Uh, when we're putting pi on the top end of this, we're going to get minus pi over n cos of n pi. And when we're putting 0 on the lower limit, this vanishes because the 0 going to x it kills it completely. And then, of course, I've got to finish my integration there. So that becomes a 1 over n squared sine of nx. And that, of course, is between 0 and pi. But, of course, this has no contribution because the sine of n pi for n integer is 0. And, of course, the sine of 0 is 0. So this, in fact, all of this is 0. So this simplifies to, um, if we write it, the pi's will cancel. I'm going to have a minus. So pi and pi cancels at 2 over n cos n pi. And the best way to write this, the cos of n pi is a well-known fact. It can be written compactly as minus 1 to the power of n. So if n is equal to 1, that's the cos of pi, it gives you minus 1, and the same thing would, would that do. So it alternates between 1 and minus 1 in intervals of pi. And perhaps to lose the minus in there, maybe it's a better idea um, to actually take this minus, put it in there, and write it as minus 1 to the power of n plus 1. So remember, this is our bn. And therefore, our Fourier series is done. So uh, what we're actually saying is our f of x, which of course is equal to x, in the interval minus pi to pi can be approximated by this quantity here. This turned out to be 0. There was not, no a zeros there. The a n's, all a n's were 0. So the only sigma, sorry, there's, there's, the only thing that sigma will contain is just signs and we worked out uh, the bn to be this quantity here 2 over n minus 1 to the power of n plus 1 so that's my bn sine of n pi x over pi so the sine of nx so this is now the Fourier expansion written in compact form what does that actually mean i mean what what what's going on well simply the graph of y is equal to x in the interval from minus pi to pi can be approximated as follows. So 2 over 1, that will return you positive, the sine of x, minus 2 over 2, sine of 2x, plus 
3 over 2. That's the pattern. This 2 is, is always going to be there because I could pull it outside, I guess, the, the sigma, the sine of 3x minus 4 over 2, the sine of 4x plus 5 over 2, the sine of 5x. And I can carry on doing that forever. The same way a McLaurin or a Taylor series is an infinite polynomial in x. This is an infinite expansion signs for this particular function. OK, so uh, what will it look like? If I make an attempt to actually perhaps sketch this approximation, what it will look like. Uh, so I hope that uh, might be useful. These days, there's a lot of uh, programs that I can actually do that very quickly for you. So that's the set of axes. OK, so um, at the moment, this is the let's say the pi and the minus pi symmetrically. And this is the line y is equal to x. So it goes as high as pi and as low as minus pi. And by doing something like that, let's say if you take a few terms, I don't know, let's say up to sine to the 7, what you will observe happening in, uh, in the graph, you probably get something which looks like this. And then rapidly it will drop down and then it will repeat itself again like that. And then it will repeat again. It will just drop down like this and so on. The same thing to the left. So this is actually a periodic expansion. So all we're doing is basically we are getting an approximation, which matches, of course. It will get a lot more straight and a lot more um, fitting to the, to the line y is equal to x, as we're, of course, taking these terms to infinity or a very large number of terms. But for the time being, this will be an approximation from this point here to this point here okay and this is what Fourier is all about and um, I hope you found the very first example useful and I hope you join me very very soon to for more examples of this particular one uh, Fourier series has some very interesting results to come up okay I'm signing out for the time being